No, let me go. Hey guys, welcome go. to the Moo Show, and we are <laughs> singing in the studio. You want to stay tuned today because we have some amazing data regarding the price drop. But before we jump, before we jump into it, Carl, how are we doing today? I'm doing very well, but I am uh, less rich today than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Crypto Kid, how are you doing today? Good. I mean, is it Friday or what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is what it is. But the thing is, I am in a short position, but I'm not making even enough to to cover like my whole portfolio. Yeah, because oh, no. my portfolio is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, if I were to have, if if I should cover up the losses on my Bitcoin holdings with a short on Bitflex, I would need to make like a massive, like tens of millions big like bro by the way this gave me an idea maybe you should hire like a professional portfolio analyst or a hedge fund manager that can hedge you hedge you against risk by opening short positions compared to your longs or your holdings etc i'm pretty sure they do this mm. that could be a cool idea maybe but i i think it doesn't really matter because if bitcoin mm -hmm. goes down today it's going to go up tomorrow like i exactly. really don't i actually don't care um so exactly. i'm fine but my, my short positions i like to play around with them so this is <laughs> this is Bitflix. And before I show you the short position, um, look at this. It, it happened exactly like we were explaining before. We had this um, falling wedge. We saw the breakout. And when we broke out, I told you guys that the red line is the line to watch. It is the end all be all the line. If we get rejected, we're going to go down. If we pump above it, we're going to see a massive break to the upside. But of course, we got a rejection, which is why I opened up my short here. So you can see over on Bitflix, I opened up this at 67.5 or 67.6 approximately. That is basically right here. So that means I opened up a short right here. Let me make that... Um, let me make that uh, green, maybe. So, so the so the green line is where I opened up my short, and um, let me go into the one hour. You can see basically here. So we got another rejection, and then we fell down. So let me know in the chat, guys. I hope that you guys also opened up a short. Um, you can see here that we made seven k since uh, since then, which is like what was that like one hour? No, one day ago, two days ago. Well, it was like yesterday, no? Yesterday, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, well, wow, time. Um, I know. Time know. flies. Yeah, I, I'm, so, I'm all over the place as well. <laughs> it was yesterday, basically. Uh, that's interesting. But yeah, so we made seven cases yesterday, um, which is something. And um, yeah, long story short, I think that for everyone who opened up this position, good job. We basically doubled the money we put in, so it's a hundred percent profits right now on this uh, on this short. I also took some profits on my long. Uh, and this is nice with Bitflex, by the way. You can open a long and short open at the same time. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you cannot do that anywhere else. Because one is for macro, one is for short term, right? So you can have exactly. like a long term huddle position and then a short term. Yeah, makes sense. I like that. So, so basically, my my Bitcoin uh, long is uh, still profitable. I still made like sixty thousand realized, and of course another twenty three thousand, which is unrealized. Um, but uh, I've taken a lot of profits now. So even if we go to zero now, like I still made money on that long position, so I can't lose. You know. Um, and uh, the, the short is basically racking up more profits and the more we go down, the more money I make. And uh, hopefully that goes with everyone out there if you open up the, <coughs> this short position. And by the way, if you also want to open up a short position on Bitflex, uh, the link down below will give you $68,888. Um, yeah, so, so use that link. And then you can also go to more here and check in every single day. I... I urge you to check in every single day and get free flex points. But yeah, that's that's my short position. And the target that I'm targeting right now is $51,000. So Wow, that low. Huh? Wow. Yeah, I think we're going to go to 51K. I think that's quite likely at that point right now. So I have a different take, but I'll share it later on. That would be amazing. Are you in a short or something? I'm not in a short. I'm just aggressively buying Bitcoin. That's good. I, I actually convinced my dad last night to... Um, put like 30k into Bitcoin. Mm. So I'm just telling friends and family, guys, look, not financial advice, but now may be your last chance. <laughs> now you need to do it. <laughs> no, but I that's true. It. That's true. I would, if, if anyone is out there wondering, um, if, if you, let's say, have $100,000, you're waiting to get into the market, now is the time to, to dollar cost average, put 5k per week or something and just start. Um, yeah, dollar cost average because we're probably going to go down in the next few weeks before the halving. And then around the halving, we're going to keep going up or, or start going up again. And then we're going to 
Palm to the Moon. So, yeah, now it's a nice discount. I love it, actually. Um, remember what I said up here? I hope Bitcoin goes down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't 100% sure, but I just said, I really hope it's going to go down because that will be amazing. Cheap Bitcoin. And my wish came true. And I hope that everyone is happy. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a potential resistance or support? I mean, it depends on... Uh, you see there is a, I don't know what, what price, it's not far from where we are now there. Yeah, at that point. Yeah, right uh, now we are at the big support. That, mm-hmm. that was my first target, by the way. This is yeah. what where I've been talking about as well. So exactly. previous big resistance right there, um, 63.5 approximately. So yeah, we're, we're at big resistance. If we break this resist, uh, support, I mean. Um, then 51. We're going to come down. But mm-hmm. it's always like this. Previous resistance becomes new support. And now we're testing it again to check if it's actually going to hold. Um the fact that we're testing it twice, you know, I think we're we're probably gonna break it. To be honest, that's that's what I'm seeing right now. Are you planning to take profit on the way down, on your short, or are you gonna? What's um, your plan? I will probably let it go. I'll probably like now. I'm not taking profits uh, yet. Maybe I should. You know what? I'll during the stream. Maybe I'll take a little bit. You know, like mm-hmm. maybe I'll do. Something like, you know, 5% or 6%. Nice. And he's in the chat. And in the chat. Vamos. Vamos. That is great. The legend. Hopefully I can see him soon. I have his stuff. Actually, yeah, dude, he's in Dubai and I've I know. still not seen him since he's landed. <laughs> I don't get it. Bro, come to the well, office. He's busy doing all the documents and everything. <laughs> you know? Of course, it's, yeah. Uh, makes sense. Andy, we love you. Thank yeah. you for joining the We're show. We're six likes away from 100 likes. Wow. How about yeah. that? Wow, and 3,000 viewers across the board. Yep. We have 1,200. And 20, uh, one, sorry, 1,022 today. I can't read numbers on YouTube. And 2,000 on X. How about that? Nice. Incredible. Incredible. And let me actually show you also Ethereum because Ethereum is tanking Oh, a bit. Ethereum is tanking. And mm. I have the ETH BTC chart, which doesn't look too great, actually. That's horrible. Yeah, it looks a bit bad. And I do have an Ethereum short open. How convenient. Yeah. Uh-huh. Quite convenient. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not complaining. I mean, actually, I should complain because my Ethereum holdings, again, are are down more than I make on this short. Dude, so. I sold all of my Ethereum at three point five and $4,000. Completely out. Really? Yeah, but the issue is I put it into altcoins, which have also tanked, so... <laughs> yeah, <coughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, but, um, but basically on this Ethereum position... I made now, yeah, ten thousand dollars. So, that's something, you know. That's incredible. Ten thousand pays for what is it? Many things. Seven uh, dinners at Nusrit. <laughs> I mean, depends <laughs> on what you eat, but I guess, yeah, approximately. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Crypto Kid, do you have something in your charts? Because yes, I know you're I eager do. to. So you know what? While we're talking about Ethereum, I can have a look at Ethereum very quickly, and then I can shift into Bitcoin. Let me to switch cool you on your screen. Sure, please. Look at this. Bam. Amazing. (laughs) Uh, So this is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart that I mentioned. Actually, no, this is the Ethereum chart. Uh, That would be lying. Uh, So I'll get into that in just a second. But Ethereum compared to Bitcoin, uh, we're seeing a free fall and the fall is going a lot more drastically compared to Bitcoin itself. Uh, Over here, we got our hopes up because Ethereum was about to break the trend line that was forming against Bitcoin. And breaking this trend line towards the upside would have meant that Ethereum would start outperforming Bitcoin and we'd be close to an altcoin season, but we unfortunately got a strong corrective move towards the downside, and now we're forming this huge falling wedge pattern. So in the upcoming weeks, it's likely that Ethereum finds support over here and then bounces back to the resistance level, which we would have been testing now for uh, multiple, multiple times, making it pretty weak. Um, And at that point, I think Ethereum will be eventually able to break out, even if that time is not right now. But Looking at Ethereum, I'm actually a bit bearish because we got some breaking news regarding the Ethereum spot ETFs. Um, Fidelity is not, I'll I'll read the exact piece of news to you in just a second, but uh, in summary, Fidelity uh, updated their filing to include staking, Mm -hmm. but Eric Balchunas and James Seyfard are saying that, guys, I'm sorry, but it's probably not going to happen, at least on the May 23rd deadline. They mentioned that at some point, maybe in two years, it's possible, but Ethereum is just not there yet. So yeah. I think that news is causing the Ethereum dump that we're seeing right now, which is now at 3.2K, uh, a huge dump from the $4,000 um, local high that we created. That's a 22% correction. So it's not looking too great for Ethereum. I exited my holdings at 3.5 and 3.950. And right now, good I'm job. Just, that was mm-hmm. a good Thanks, timing. Yeah. 
Thanks, man. Yeah. Bang on. But mm -hmm. in the future, I would probably suggest instead Shorting of doing it. Yeah, exactly because yes. then you don't have to liquidate your holdings. Exactly, that's true. That's what I'm always doing. So mm -hmm. I never actually sell my Bitcoin or Ethereum. I just keep them, and then I go to Bitflex and I just make a short and I make some extra money. Yeah, for that's fun, you know. That's that's a very very good recommendation. I, I think I learned my lesson actually. I, I could have shorted. Uh, it's just like my risk tolerance cannot comprehend altcoins. It's it's too volatile for me. But um, I think I'll look into now trading Bitcoin and Ethereum at the same time. To me, like specializing in one crypto overall is already super difficult to do. But I think Ethereum, I'll definitely add it to my trading list from now on. But um, that's my TA on Ethereum. If we want to jump into the macro time frame, we can see on the monthly we're forming this huge rising wedge. And we can see also on the monthly time frame, Ethereum is forming a huge shooting star candle. And if the shooting star candle plays out and it closes like such in 12 days and 11 hours, we could be expecting a retest to the $2,500 for Ethereum, where I would actually be looking to open, um, a, open a long position or perhaps uh, buy Ethereum once again on spot. So maybe, Carl, if not financial advice, but if you want to add a limit order to um, Ethereum, you could do so at 2.3, 2.4. I shall. Mm -hmm. Wow. I shall. That's I'm cool. taking financial advice from no, you. No, do not take uh. financial advice. Full <laughs> yeah. disclosure. No. <laughs> yeah, you're my friend. I shared my TA, and that's what you're. But if you decide to follow that, then that's. Up I'm to gonna you. take financial advice. From <laughs> you <right now. laughs> and by the way, it's funny how the market priced in. If you remember, I think it was three weeks ago they were pricing the ETF mm -hmm. on Ethereum at fifty percent. Then last week at thirty-five percent, mm -hmm. and now they're saying. Ain't happening. Ain't happening. <laughs> That's Two, the five, thing. Uh, w what exactly are we looking at? Um, I would say to be conservative, I would put it at like 2.400 exactly. 2.4. Yeah, basically down at the previous resistance down here. Correct. Yeah, correct. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, three, four, four, I would say. Three, four, four, four. Oh, and that's two, four, four. Oh, you can maybe switch to Carl's screen. Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check. Switch go. to my screen. People can see when I... Um, put this so basically three and then four 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 mm -hmm. and then um how many ethereum wait so you're gonna buy 3.44 or 2.44 oh two point yeah yeah uh -huh. oh, sorry sorry i got confused um two like this yes now we're correct uh oh, you're gonna long i would buy spot personally Nah. nah. Okay, that's up I to mean, you. I mean, I will do that as well. It's like, up to you. I will do that, but that I just do manually. Mm -hmm. mm. But I, I will do. Th but uh, yes, I will. Okay. I sh I shall. I shall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. I will. I will long with a uh, with a. Um, um, wow, you went DGen. Really? This is not DGen. <laughs> that is bit DGen. What's DGen? With this? <laughs> <laughs> so now we have an open order down there. So when we do go down there, then on Bitflix, I am going to immediately get um, my position open, which is nice. That's cool, man. Yeah. That is cool. By the way, yesterday, I think we, we were talking about gaps that we didn't find. Are the CME gap? No, we found it, no? Did we find it? But it, it, it kind of it was closed, closed by the week. week. Yeah, right, right. exactly. We, we spoke about we spoke about it pre-stream and, mm -hmm. and we were kind of debating it and the week closed it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it right now and I see literally no gap here. Which time frame? This is now the one hour. Ah, one hour. If I go to the daily, I see even less gaps. Yeah, I think for the CME, the best gaps to find are on the daily time frame. Mm. Um, so yeah, but there's literally no gap. There's here. one there, there one, right one there, just there. below your cursor. Just yeah. below. Go down, 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 down. Um, up, okay. Right in the middle of where you were. Uh, uh, there. Up. There, yeah. there, there, there. Here. Just below it. It's like there a it four hundred dollars. That's not a gap. Yeah, if you zoom in, there is I like can't a, see because the wicks are wicking. Ah, I couldn't, I can't see the wick from but here. But if you if Sorry. you zoom in, there is a three hundred dollars. I ah, think it's so tiny. It's maybe. super tiny. Yeah, you have yeah, to zoom honestly, in. Honestly, I just think the issue with this Bitcoin, is a gap. Look, this is beautiful. But it, it closed later on. No, exactly. That's mm -hmm. a gap that closed. Boom, textbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. This is like a, mm -hmm. this is a disaster for for gap deniers. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. look, after the ETF launches, Ooh, I wasn't trusting the CME gaps before, but uh, now no, because we have... Not even. It, because we're basically following Wall Street. So the yeah. CME gaps, if you find one... Look at this also. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Boom, filled immediately. Oh, nice. we have a super chat, which is uh, an interesting question. Uh, guys, how about this? So Goat is asking, let me put it on the screen so I can read it. He's asking, open a short when I woke up at 63K. Was this a mistake? Can I get to 61K today? Hmm. Do you want to take it or? Wait, so he opened a short at 63,000 and he's asking, 
if he can get to 61. So if the price of Bitcoin is going to drop to 61 today. He opened his short at 63. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me check. Where is the price right now? 63.2 something. So yeah. basically break even right now. Then what's the stress? See, I think at four, the four hourly time frame um, mm -hmm. I have on my chart, it's um, we, we are forming a shooting... It's it's a reversal candle. Uh, of course, if we close like this in two hours forty three minutes, um, personally, um, my target for the bearish divergence that we're, we were seeing a couple of um, actually last week Thursday was initially sixty nine thousand dollars, and if we were to break uh, my support range between uh, sixty six point six to sixty nine, uh, then my target was sixty three point seven. So we've basically hit it perfectly now and I added to my spot holdings at 63.7 um, but Bitcoin if we don't see a clear reversal above from 63.7 I think we could potentially head lower it's just going to depend on the ETF flow so what happened was the main driver of this dump was GBTC now on uh, Thursday the dump started happening on Thursday so we were at $73,000 and uh, Bitcoin started to fall um, Thursday onwards and how the ETFs work, the spot ETFs, they basically publicize their buying and selling data one or two days after their initial transactions. So if, let's say, Carl comes to me on BlackRock and uh, he wants to sell his IBIT shares, then what I do is to match my holdings in my vault, I also sell off some of my holdings in my Bitcoin vault to match the net asset value price. Yeah. Um, and after they do that, they do this real time in the market. But the data is reported one to two days after. Exactly. So my theory, and I share this in my community as well, um, was that I want to wait for I want to wait for the Monday um, data to come out, and most likely would come out as a net outflow because of the selling pressure that we saw on Thursday and Friday, and that's what happened. And now I'm a bit more concerned because we saw a even a larger selling pressure going into today, today meaning that either tomorrow's or the day after's ETF data could be again net outflow. And if this goes into IBIT, then I think things will get scary. Yeah, and also FOMC tomorrow. Correct. So FOMC is going to be tomorrow. Maybe yeah. we should... I want to stream it on my channel. Would you guys care to join? It's a little bit late, 10 p.m. But I could maybe join for... Um, yeah, I think it should be fine. Yeah, it could be fine. Yeah. Uh, Why not? But I agree. Like, we've seen the largest... Well, we have some sauce and some data, guys. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for the news section because uh, me and CryptoKid have some interesting data on the outflows and Grayscale mm -hmm. is dropping it oh it's dropping mm. yeah but in summary of the ta my personal outlook is that um i think a final buy the dip opportunity could be coming at fifty nine thousand dollars at 59k we have um very important support from um the seven period moving average which i'm sharing right now mr m um Let me go and on that's on the weekly time frame it's yep. built up from a system called consensio which is the three seven and thirty period moving averages and at uh, at 59k, apart from the moving average itself, we do have very good uh, resistance, which we were talking with Mr. M before the before the uh, show. Yeah. By, by the way, my, my brother, which is in Dubai, so shout out to Fabio. We were actually looking at the at the price, and we we've, we've seen a 59 good support as well. Exactly. We were thinking maybe we go to 59 um, mm -hmm. as a you know first, and then like Carl said, see what happens. Mm -hmm. But I also I love the weekly chart; is my absolute favorite. Same. And you can see there is a lot of support in there. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like we're gonna go uh, to fifty nine. I, I agree. So, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't wait for it. I would DCA my way in, like Carl said, because if exactly. you wait for a specific price, you could be the skeleton in the meme. You yeah, know, yeah, it could go to like fifty nine <laughs> one, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> and then you missed it. Like Bitcoin, I mean, it topped out so funnily enough at sixty nine exactly, right? <sighs> I mean, yeah. Bitcoin does these things like we go to six, 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 and like it just does these stuff. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised. But on the weekly time frame, I saw Carl talk about this on his channel too. Usually, this is a bearish formation, especially after Bitcoin has been heading up on the weekly time frame for so many green candles in a row. Um, the way that you trade this, based off of a technical textbook basis, is if the if the next candle, which is this current candle that we're in, goes below the prior wick of the Doji. And so the, the point to have shorted would have been at 64.5. I'm not doing that because we're still in a macro uptrend. Uh, but of course, if you wanted to, that could be a good entry point if this candle closes as such. But I think 59K is very good support. We can see on both the, the seven period MA and we can see it on the previous all-time high territor territory as well. Uh, Bitcoin did uh, bounce between these levels. If Bitcoin reverses further, which I think is pretty unlikely, 
Uh, but of course, there's always that probability because in the parabolas, in the in the halving cycle parabolas, that would be breaking below it. Then I think the final point would be like 47k, and I don't see Bitcoin ever go- going below 47k because that's the golden, the Fibonacci golden pocket. So if you're looking to DCA in, I would say 59, 56, and the range between 59 and 56, and finally. $47,500. But anything more, I don't think is too realistic. Yes, this monthly candle is very concerning. We have a shooting star candle on the monthly time frame, um, And that's after seven green candles in a row, which we discussed multiple times on the show. It's only happened once. 2012. Ever. Yeah. 2012. In 2012. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if the next candle, if it opens below the close of this shooting star candle, we could be tanking. I really don't want to see that. I really don't want to see it. Like Bitcoin, Carl, like I was, I was doing some research and we're clearly not following previous cycles. At because all. At all, right? Because usually if Bitcoin starts to dump after hitting an all-time high, Ethereum should be blasting through the roof. Mm-hmm. Altcoins should start to see some traction. But here we can see Ethereum is crashing, altcoins are crashing, and it's just a different point in time. That's a very good point, uh, CryptoKid. And... Um I also actually I I would have thought we could see but actually when you when you think about it usually you would see an initial dump with Bitcoin but as 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 long as Bitcoin stops dumping let's say Bitcoin starts now mm-hmm. and just trades if you go back to my screen of course yeah this is Bitcoin right so if we go down like this, then I expect altcoins to also dump, at least initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, only when Bitcoin is down here, we could see altcoins rally back up a little bit to to recoup. Mm-hmm. But if it, Bitcoin now chills here, that means altcoin season. Correct, because we mm-hmm. see the consolidation. Yeah. When Bitcoin consolidates after a massive run-up, we always see uh, altcoin season. But mm-hmm. like I said, so if we go down like this and this, like this, then altcoin season happens here. Uh, but maybe not as crazy as it would be if, if we see it here, right? So exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes you can even see altcoin season when when Bitcoin uh, consolidates a little bit to the upside. So if we would consolidate a little bit like this, that would then, be perfect. Then usually you see crazy altcoin season, but but not always because, for example, if you go down here, this uh, this is not con- this is more like a. But that was lower down. Like if now yeah. that Bitcoin is close to all time highs, if we consolidate upwards, then mainstream media is also remaining bullish because I saw now so many news articles, so many people are like, ah, you know what? I think Bitcoin, it's over. It's the top. It's going to correct. Mm. Then I'm going to buy. Usually, I don't know. It's just the we, we'll do a check on the fear and greed index because yeah. that entails the entire mainstream media as well. But Carl, while you were looking at the chart, I also noticed something on the four hourly. If you zoom in, do you see that head and shoulders pattern? On the four hour. Correct. So if you zoom in, actually, no, sorry, on the daily time frame. Um, if you zoom in, you can see like a head and shoulders, right? Like here? Mm-hmm. Like this? Correct. What do you um, think? Do you think we're going to break below? Let me, first of all, it broke it already, if that's the case. Yeah, we're, we're just breaking the neckline. Okay, let me make the neckline uh, yellow mm-hmm. uh, and put this like this, maybe. Yeah, because. I mean, we did have that huge wick, so maybe I would measure it from the daily time frame. I would probably do like I this. I like this. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And in that case, we broke it already, mm-hmm. uh, and the target would be calculated like this. That would give us a target of fifty-six point eight thousand dollars. Wow, perfect. So yeah, as I said, fifty-six to fifty-nine. I think it's a good range for buying. Fifty-nine is going to be strong, though. Oh, it's going to be yeah. strong. Mm-hmm. Look at this. We're getting a bit of a bounce off of this level that we just put here. So exactly. let me go into the one hour. Look at that. So that's that's beautiful. So well, the market is about to open in what an hour? Yeah, hour. Correct. So for anyone who's not in the long, like it could be interesting to make a small long here for a bounce, but then I would have to be quite I'd be cautious. Cautious and uh, probably close that long right here at the very latest because Yeah, because we, we can make a lower high and then continue the bearish trend downwards. Yeah, so yeah. So basically now we are at 63.3 approximately or 63.7 actually sorry uh we could go up here to 65 and then maybe we roll over like this mm-hmm. just like we did there so here is actually the next place to short if you missed the short now mm-hmm. potentially just like i shorted right here here you can short Makes yeah. sense. and don't forget to claim your bonus on bitflex guys really it's very important to to claim the bonus because otherwise it's like 
giving up on free money. So what you also want to do, go to more and go to rewards hub. And this is important. <coughs> check in every single day. I checked in already. You checked in? Uh, today, I believe I did, yeah. Perfect. Mr. M, you need to go check in as well. I need to check in, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you go to Flex Shop. Get and that you, Gucci bag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you no, take, go for the Vision Pro. Yeah, you take your Flex points that you get for free, and then you go here and you redeem free stuff. And I must say, Bitflex is doing a great job by basically rewarding traders with cool stuff. You know, it works. It's nice. Like, I fall for it. I love it. <laughs> you know, Apple Vision Pro, amazing. Gucci bag, MacBook Pro, like Gucci I... Gucci bag is not amazing because I, you know what? I see the Vision Pro as a, as an asset. I don't see it as a liability. Why? Because, I mean, you can use the Vision Pro in your work, in your productivity. Can you, you know? carry things in a bag? Okay. I mean, you can carry things <laughs> in a $20 bag. But can you carry things okay, in I a... I guess, yes. You can, you carry, can carry things with style. in a bag. Correct, correct. <laughs> so there is utility to a Gucci bag. Okay, correct. Maybe that's the next inflation hedge, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Flexi. <laughs> fashion. Come on, it's fashion, guys. Uh, that Gucci bag is the bomb. I love it. <laughs> yeah. For example, let's say you're in the desert mm -hmm. and you, you have um, uh, like um, 13 water bottles and you're stranded and you need to go walk one... 100 kilometers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, <laughs> would you choose the Apple Vision <laughs> Pro <laughs> or would you choose the Gucci bag? Because in the Gucci bag, you can actually carry the, the water bottles. The Apple Vision Pro, you... What, what, are, you, you what are you going to do with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> How can it save you in the desert? That is so true. I have another one. With the, with the Apple Vision Pro, you can pretend to be in Japan. With the Gucci bag, you can go to Japan. How about that? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Guys, maybe we should change the topic of the live streams from now on. Let's discuss fashion, fashion trends in the world. Fashion and the comparing utilities on uh, on uh, objects things. that Bitflix will give you. For example, a drone. How about that? That's pretty cool. I've never had a drone, actually. Same. But Bit Bitflix will give it to you for free if you just uh, convert your, your flex points. Um, that's the gold points. Like this is really like baller. Like not even I have enough yeah, points for exactly. that. Exactly. I, I think this can maybe be reached in two years for me. <laughs> yeah. Let's Ooh. go to bronze. Carl, let's go someone to bronze. is asking, how do you actually claim on Bitflex? You keep mentioning those uh, points, but I cannot see where. I will show you. I will show you. Nice. So basically, you have bronze, uh, and here these are more humble gifts. <laughs> Treasure is very important. This is the cheapest one you can get. It's, it's only pretty easy to actually get that many flex points. 14,000 flex mm -hmm. points. I think you need to trade for like three days and boom, you have uh, 14,000 flex points. Um, or AirPods Pro or all this kind of stuff, you know. And I heard a rumor that more crazy things are coming into the flex shop. So Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible Hashtag stuff. Hashtag Gucci gang in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gucci gang, exactly. <laughs> now... If you do want to go and claim um, bonuses, first of all, you go to Rewards Hub. Part of the bonus can be uh, found here. So first of all, yeah, the flex points can also be converted into these vouchers. We, we showed it before. Yep. Um, and to be fully eligible for the uh, full amount of bonus, you need to make deposits. So you don't get it for just signing up. You need to sign up, make a deposit, and you have to trade. And then the more you trade, the bigger the bonus. And everything can be found in the rewards hub. And you can also go here to referral and campaigns. And you can find all the information that Bitflix has. Uh, they make it very simple for us. So nice. Thank that's you. Incredible. There you go. Judge Lee, now you know. Thanks for dude, asking. I think we should get on with the news because we have a yep. lot to cover. Let's go. Let's um, do that. Let's do, you want do me that. To catapult myself on your screen. First? But Bitcoin is getting a little uh, bit of a bounce. If, if you catapult the, it to my screen, then you'd be seeing Medieval Empire. So um, maybe, maybe that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, hold on. Let me share something different. Let me share. I can go on my news and you can keep playing the game. Let, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing in the game? Uh, dude, I'm, I just uh, upgraded to Town Hall 16. Wow. wow. Yeah, man. And, no, and fully RTG. Good job. No pay to win at all. 
Good job. Da Vinci is still killing it. He's above me, actually. Yes, but... Yeah, but is it really Da Vinci? Is it really Da Vinci? <laughs> we don't know It's that, semi right? Da Vinci. <laughs> it's a, semi it's, Da Vinci. It's like, a, it's like a portion, like a small bit of Da Vinci. Yeah. yeah. Shout outs to all Medieval Empires fans out there. It is the most fun crypto game to play right and now. And addicting, I would say. And Very I would, addicting. And I would vouch for that. And yeah. deeply undervalued. People don't <laughs> understand how much fun it is to play. So yeah, go and check it out. Yeah, and Da Vinci as well, which will be on the Moon Show tomorrow, by the way, as every Wednesdays. Then we can then remember to ask him who's actually playing on his account. Yes. Oh, he's going to say him. He's yeah, of say course. Him. He will say him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the director behind the whole operation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CryptoKid, you mentioned Fear and Greed. Correct. 79. I think it's quite high, to be honest, but it's going really? to refresh in 10 hours. Yeah. So we might see a drop, but as we say all the time, guys, I, I wouldn't get too attached to these numbers because they can stay overextended for a period of time. So it's good to check them as a daily kind of task thingy, but I wouldn't get too much attached to it. As you can see, March has dropped from 25 to 3%. Mm -hmm. So are we going to see a Redmond? Finally, I'm actually happy that there is a there is a breather because, you know, the price has been going bananas for the past seven months. So I'm actually happy. And as you pointed out, 35 days only till the halving. So it's scary, man. Like I remember when I first um, started crypto, it was four, exactly four years ago. So I was 12 years old and um, I was like, that was my first halving cycle. And I was seeing the news that Bitcoin is skyrocketing and it was like exciting. Um, but it's crazy to think that that was four years ago, man. Exactly. Uh, some people are saying in the chat that we usually see a correction either before or after correct. the halving. That's correct. So we on can... average, actually, I can tell you the exact data. So from mm. the high that is created the month before the halving to the low created on the candle of the halving, we see on average a drop of 20%. Now, if we measure that from the high that we created this month, which is 70, almost $74,000, that would take us down to 59K. FYI. Which is 59. Which is, you know, what we've talked about. Exactly. Now, here's the banger. I mean, first of all, have you seen, guys, a rogue seller <laughs> sold 400 <laughs> Bitcoin and on BitMEX, the price has gone to $8,900. With 400 Bitcoin? <clears throat> like, just, I mean, 400 Bitcoin wow. isn't too much necessarily. A rogue like, seller spot market? Well, do you know what the good news is? Like, the CME gap at 9,000 is closed. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy must have then lost a bunch of money because that slippage is insane. Yeah, I don't know. Like, usually what happens with exchanges like this is if they have, um, like, I remember Mt. Gox, um, when they sold, like, they had to shut off the exchange and reverse every mm -hmm. single transaction. Yeah. So I think when stuff like this happens, they refund the transaction itself. Because, like, I, I just don't get on BitMEX how, how 400 Bitcoin only can cause such a candle, you know? It was probably like a bug or something. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. But 400 Bitcoin is a lot. Like, if you, if you, mm -hmm. if you use market... Sell, sell, yeah. Even on Binance, you would create a wick. Really? Yeah, 400 Bitcoin, I think. Do you think so? In just one click like this? Yeah, then probably. But it won't be like down to 8K or something. No, no, no. On Binance, it would be like... Maybe like a $50... <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm just speculating. I don't pretend to know, but I would mm -hmm. immediately uh, expect like... A wick of some A of big some wick of like, I don't know, 5% maybe. 5%? It's... I think so. It's 400 Bitcoin. You press market. If you press market like this. But then if you think about it that way, the ETFs buying every day, that should create a huge upwards. Which we have some data. Yeah, but they yep. don't buy with the market order Correct. on an they, exchange. They do OTC, which is yeah. also true. Yeah. yeah uh, thank sense. you, Christian. We have a super chat. Uh, I'll address you, buddy. Let me finish the news and then we'll go to the super chat. Uh, he's asking about a project or a token. We can look into it. So yeah, this happened, uh, so which is crazy. And of course, the banger of the news 642 million in USD sold in outflows from Grayscale. Yeah. They are selling. Dude, like it was expected that we would see net outflows today. Um, I think this is good still because we didn't see outflows from IBIT. Mm -hmm. The moment we see outflows from IBIT, then it's concerning. Then it's um, worry time, yeah. Like it's, it's a double-edged sword right now, the ETFs, because when we go up, well, the upwards pressure is is you know, we, we can multiply that by uh, however much because when the market goes up, then the ETFs also buy, causing the market to rally more. But when we drop, the same thing happens at this current moment in time because Grayscale has the intention of reducing their assets. At least IBIT or FBTC mm -hmm. Fidelity uh, or Invest, because they bought their Bitcoin at cheaper prices, then it doesn't make sense for them to reduce their holdings with their yeah. risk management. Um, but if we do come down to a point where 
the ETFs are no longer profitable with their Bitcoin holdings, which would be like 40K, then it's like, yeah, already game over. But I don't think there's too much to worry about right now. Uh, GBTC still has like $22 billion worth in assets. Um, so we'll probably see the selling pressure whenever Bitcoin dumps for the next couple of months. Exactly. I found this tweet that I love 100% and it shows the basically grayscale selling pressure since January 11, which is when the ETF was launched. As you can see, it was the largest. I mean, it says 643 because I think it was 642 point something. So they kind of rounded up. But as you can see, the previous largest was January 22nd, basically like 11 days after. And then we had a 599 million, I think it was March 1st or somewhat in between. And then we got this, which was the largest ever so far. So, mm -hmm. you know, a new record in, in outflows. And I think it's because of the fees, of course, you know, they charge the largest amount. And then as we said last time on the show, there's going to be a 30 days period in which whenever people sell, they can they buy. They can't transfer back. Exactly. So they might create some, some pressure indeed. And as you can see here, exactly like you said, well, first of all, we will see the data coming in soon, but... You can see the numbers. So like you said, BlackRock was buying, but not as much as Grayscale was selling, right? Yeah. So there was a pressure. Of course, we have others, but as you can see, the volume was small. I mean, small, those are millions. So it's <laughs> when I say small, you know, guys, take it with a pinch of salt because it's a lot of money. But in comparison to the one that's been sold, right? Exactly. So that one has to be considered, of course. And the concern isn't over yet because right now Bitcoin is continuing to dump, meaning tomorrow's data and um, Thursday's data will also likely be negative. So watch out. Exactly. As you can see, and it says, the tremendous outflow continue. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has experienced significant outflows with Bloomberg data indicating 7.4 billion exiting over the first 31st trading days, which is insane. One reason why Grayscale notable outflows could be higher is the fee, <coughs> 1.5 compared to competitors, which is less than 0.3. So there is a huge difference in there. And some people are probably saying, mm, maybe I should sell and rebuy them back in a month when it's possible. Additionally, entities like Genesis Global Hold Co has gone bankrupt. Yeah, and you know, we can look at it, look, look at this from a good side as well, because once GBTC selling pressure is over, there's not really one single entity that has enough Bitcoin to be causing huge price movements towards the downside. Exactly. So after GBTC is over, the only thing that we should be looking at is, okay, if the 450 Bitcoin, new mined Bitcoin are um, demanded every day, and if it's demanded more than that, then the price should hypothetically be going up, right? So I think after GBTC is done and it's out of the way, then it should be clear skies. So that's the good side of things. Exactly. And technically, exactly like you said, it, we should be in a place where more money are coming in. We've seen in Japan, we're going to talk about pension funds. Oh, yeah. we, there, are, there are some players being ready to jump into market. And look at this. Conversely, or conversely, BlackRock IBIT ETF saw 2.48 billion in inflows, surpassing the competitor Fidelity, which had 718 million. So again, United States has basically all of them. But interesting, Australia and Brazil also registered some money, 5 million and 23 respectively, which is nice. Uh, on the contrary, Canada, Germany, Switzerland and Sweden have experienced an outflow ranging from, ranging from 9.7 to 32 million. So people in Europe are selling, people in US are buying, people in Brazil mm -hmm. and Australia are also buying. So there is a There's like an interesting a diversification. But actually on my Twitter I posted a chart um, that looks into the total exchange traded products for Bitcoin across the world. And what we can see, which is not the best, is that um, across the world, uh, US spot and futures ETFs do lead the out the outflows mostly, but um, we can see in other countries as well, including Europe, uh, which has the highest weight on it, um, th these exchange-traded products are continuing to sell. Yeah. And look at this. This I found was interesting. Other assets have experienced inflows last week, including Polkadot, 3.1 million, Litecoin, 2.3 million, and a multi-asset with 3.2 million, Binance and Cardano, also 1.2 million. So, not bad. I mean, still, I mean, it's not altcoin season because like Carl explained in the beginning, you know, there is a seasonality uh, with crypto and Bitcoin, but it's good to see that there is money flying in, right? That's actually not bad. Of course, as we discussed, Japan, 1.4 trillion government pension funds is looking into buying Bitcoin. I mean, like you said so well, Grayscale is going to stop, but there's going to be a lot of people coming in. 100%. And, you know, um, like Japan is the fourth largest economy in the world in terms of currency. 
right? I don't know if, if it still holds that level because um, uh, Japan also today, they uh, introduced rate hikes for the first time exactly. in, since in 17, 17 years, years since when I was mm. born. I have it um, here somewhere. And that see. devalued the Japanese yen, which is known to be one of the most stable and strong currencies out there. And to me, this is a huge concerning thing. Like if we go into the CPI data that looks at, um, looks at rent and housing and food and energy, all of these things are CPI. radically going upwards. <laughs> <laughs> CPI exactly. <coughs> one one thing mm -hmm. before we go forward, we have one thousand one hundred and one eleven, one 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 one. Guys, make a wish right now. People watching on uh, YouTube, thank you guys, you're amazing. Don't forget to subscribe. That's very important because if you don't subscribe, you miss out on our next trades. And you guys see, the proof is in the pudding. We've been making money from these trades. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win, but at least we we win more than we lose and that's very important so subscribe so you see the next video next live stream and if you're on twitter make sure to go to youtube and check out carl's videos because carl also does video updates apart from the live streams and those you do not want to miss as well both things exactly yeah. and um and what else we're on twitch Correct. yeah on three twitch, viewers on twitch we're, we're multiplying huge shout out to multiplying the, like rabbits it's three. parabolic right now we started <laughs> off as one, one. Went from zero to one to yeah. now three out of nowhere I think it's parabolic. Well, exponential. The next yeah. one's going to be nine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. M, how can they find us on Twitch? I think people need to know. So, can you can you show show Twitch like what is the channel that they can subscribe to? Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we can ask the moderators to put it uh, to put the link in the chat so people can click. Because um, I think I'll have to uh, do some some magic here. But I maybe when I switch to your screen, uh, I'll put it. I'll put it on. Yeah, uh, please do. Yeah. But yeah, we have. Close to 400 likes. Thank you so much, guys. I didn't want to cut you off. CryptoKid, you can proceed no right now. No worries at all, dude. I think I lost my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about the fact I'm that Japan... I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> it's no, fine, no, it's, it's okay. I remember what we were saying about the Japan. 17 Japan. years, they've, ah, yes. they've touched the oh. interest rate for the first time. Yeah, and you know, look, I think, you know, one of the most stable economies in the world, increasing interest rates, we're seeing energy prices, house prices, rent, mortgage, um, inflation... Everything is going incredibly high. The amount of mentionings of soft landing in the media is hitting all-time highs again. And I think all of these are huge, terrible factors that make me question the performance of the stock market. I think the new printed money is funneling into the stock market to create an illusion that the economy is doing well. But as soon as the Fed starts pivoting, or if they start pivoting at some point, which they should... I think we're going to see a huge crash in the stock market because I think everything is just in a huge bubble. Um, and the moment we see that crash, uh, I think there's going to be a change in the reserve currency of the world. Um, and I think some of that is going to go into Bitcoin. And once that happens, I think the price of Bitcoin, when you measure it against the United States dollar, we're going to see a huge God candle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just can't wait for that day. Of course, actually, no, uh, I don't want to say that because that would mean millions of people would lose their jobs. A lot of people would, um, you know, de it's it's really a very, very bad thing. And to save yourself from that, uh, you can diversify, of course, not financial advice, but you can diversify into assets that are meant to hedge against this and hedge against that risk, such as gold, silver, and Bitcoin. But yeah, I mean, uh, the stock market is continuing to rally, uh, but we do have a lot of concerning signals flashing. Yeah, super well said. And FOMC tomorrow, right? Correct. So I think 99% are expecting yes. no changes whatsoever on the interest rate. We but will you see. Know, they, could they could surprise, surprise us out them. of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, and they have done that in the past. The issue is uh, their target inflation data is 2%, and we're currently at 3.8%, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And no matter how high we keep these rates, it doesn't seem like the inflation is dropping. As a matter of fact, we've increased. So I think without rate hikes, it's it's going to be very difficult for us to be reaching that 2% inflation target. With elections coming up, there's a lot of pressure on the Fed, even though the Fed should be basically independent. Uh, but, you know, we all know yeah. that that's not the case, unfortunately. Not really. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting year this year. Um, and with the elections coming up with economic uncertainty and geopolitical uncertainty, I think this is good for Bitcoin overall. Indeed. And, you know, if you look into the bigger picture, you can see we have a bear market or bear phase, a pre-bull, a first bull and a second bull. And we are somewhat in here. The so not even, not even at the half of it. So <coughs> when in doubt, zoom out. Of course, this is a super bullish chart. It can show you what could happen. It doesn't have to repeat, but it will rhyme most likely. Yeah, but this is exactly the thing. So people that think it's bearish that we're breaking down now, it's just a small blip on the bigger picture because 
some of these blips on this these other pictures up there felt like a yeah, disaster. Look, I, I have it, I have it there, yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Mm -hmm. People were so scared when these things happened. I remember because I was actually mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, the the last two red ones there, I was there, and I remember people were freaking out, freaking out. Even myself, I was like, oh, it's over, maybe. But then it just keeps pumping. So mm -hmm. we are now seeing just a blip on the bigger picture, and in the future. We're gonna look back at what's happening now and just look at oh. laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we're, I not, we're not even gonna we're, we're not gonna see it even on the chart because Bitcoin's <laughs> gonna be so high. Exactly, that's what I wanted to show you today because I thought it's it's important to remind people that a nothing goes up in a straight line and b those dips are meant to no financial advice. You know. Yeah, it goes in a curve, and whenever you're <laughs> in a parabola, every single dip you see, you experience is a buying opportunity. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm stacking sats and staying humble. I love it. That's very what I'm good. doing. I love it. Very actually, good. I do have a very interesting data point to link to this. On your computer? On my computer over on the Bloomberg terminal. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Show okay, it. wait, wait. Show this, it. Is gonna be, this is going to be, uh, are you ready for me to push the oh, button? I'm ready. I'm All ready. right, boom. Let's go. <clears throat> Look at that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Bloomberg terminal, which is something I've dreamed of having ever since I was 13. And it was my 13th birthday candle wish, which is weird for a 13-year-old. But, um, you know, what we can see here is... Wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. How is it possible that you are sitting with a like a million dollar product here? I, I, yeah, I mean, a few pulling some strings here and there. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do have some very interesting stuff coming up. So uh, stay tuned. I'm very excited. Hopefully it happens. And when it does, that's when I'm going to uh, talk about it. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This this is is By the way, this is incredible. I'm, I'm so I'm so oh, proud and so happy. Much, this is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, this is like a million dollar system. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> are we allowed to to show this now? Are we this, uh, this specifically? I think we are. Are we getting in trouble now? No, no, no. This is fine. Okay. If somebody gets in trouble, it's me. But I, I think this is fine um, because it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, the terminal is so powerful. There's like four hundred and fifty thousand different applications that you can go into, um, and this is just one of them. And this is looking at a simple back testing strategy that covers Bitcoin. And I wanted to keep it relevant. So what I did was I put it to uh, the day that I started my channel, which was the 14th of December, 2021. I believe it's the day you started your, your channel as well, Mr. M, right? Yeah, exactly. So ever since then, if we look at Bitcoin, the most profitable and leave the most profitable aside, right? And if we don't look at the different oscillators and indicators, the most profitable and um, the strategy that has least hassle involved in it was just buying and holding Bitcoin. If you just bought and hold and held Bitcoin, then you would have been in massive profits, let alone compounding and DCing into Bitcoin on a daily basis. Uh, your portfolio would have been flying through the roof. And that's the power of compounding. That's the power of DCAing. Uh, if you look at Michael, strategy, uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, they bought Bitcoin again today. From like, the top. From the top. I mean, they buy the top continuously. And if you believe in the asset, if you if you believe in uh, Bitcoin being the hedge against inflation in the future, it really doesn't matter what price you buy it at as long as you DCA. Mm -hmm. Very important. And subscribe to the moon. Correct. And CryptoKit and Mr. M. Exactly. All of that. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> Everything. Just remember, guys, that we go live every day, Monday to Friday at this exact time. So you don't want to miss this show because all of this alpha and also crypto kid comes sometimes and show us this incredible data well, which I'm is there incredible. every friday and then sometimes just sometimes sometimes he pops in which is um, always yeah. a blessing thank you so oh, that's so kind of you guys yeah. thank you thank you indeed nice thank you nice nice uh, can we just before you move into you i know you have some some juice as well but yeah, just uh, a, just a couple more things we have much. a super chat from christian actually sent two so thank you so much and he's asking uh let me put it on the screen and he says um what do you guys have to say about AXS? Uh, Axie Infinity? Chart. So maybe we can mm. uh, maybe we can leave it for, because uh, it will require you to pull up some charts maybe, because uh, he actually sent two super chats, so maybe we can look into it. But maybe we do, we do it after you finish your segment. What do you think? Because no, it will be tricky. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah it's, I think let's leave it to the end. Uh, okay. But what I can say in the short term is that I'm super bullish on gaming in crypto. So... Anything gaming now, which is on a discount, I think will do very well in the future. Indeed. I agree. I'm so bullish on me. <laughs> if you know, you know. If, if you, you know, know, you know. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but really, I think Medieval Empires is really killing it right now um, in terms of the progress and everything. And very soon, in the next few weeks, 
it's a bit of inside info, but it's going to be a team fortress uh, on the map so that on the land you can actually uh, play with others okay. and attack a team fortress. You, you cannot do it alone. You need to do it with others. Oh, so it's like clan wars and like clash of clans. It's basically multiplayer. <laughs> From wow. up until now, it's been single player, which is, you know, because things are rolling out over time, right? But so, yeah, in exciting stuff for Medieval Empress is coming up. That's exciting. That's really exciting. I know. Nice. Cool, Mr. M. Maybe we do some movie magic. Of and course. Have you have you looked over into all of your uh, data? And I can switch into some of mine. Or? Yeah, you can go. Okay, yeah, cool. I finished my section. Yeah, cool. Which is awesome. Nice. Give me one second. Look, we had Luke over on Twitch. Look at that. It's good to see you, buddy. Great to see Luke. Yeah, legend. Okay, cool. I can switch over. Let now. me catapult you back on. Oh, Jason Casper. Shout out to the Moon Show. Yeah, we have to have him on the show. By the way, Jason, uh, check out the Telegram because uh, there is a group in between Yumi and Carl. Hit me up and we'll uh, have you on the show. I'd love to have you on my channel as well, by the way, Jason. Yeah, you guys should make a collab. I think you even spoke about it before. Yeah, we spoke. Oh. It never happened. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Nice. Yeah. He always gives us this $100 back and forth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. We need to invite him to for something. Yeah. Soon <laughs> it's enough for one news thread. Yeah, it? right. <laughs> yeah. You ready to? Yes, sir. Right, let's go. Boom. Cool. So this is a, this is a funny <laughs> meme. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it got me straight away. I mean, it's. I mean, look, Bitcoin when we hit sixty three k, literally a week ago. Yeah. It was like whoa, wow, sixty three thousand dollars. Now it's like sixty three thousand dollars. This is the, the same thing that happens every single time. No matter if you're a pro trader, if you're a robot. Okay, maybe if you're a robot, but if you're not a robot, we all have this psychology. Like it's. New highs are created, then the old highs are like low prices. Uh, but we just need to remember um, the macro perspective and that 63K is still a huge number. And it's a lot, lot higher than where we were just, mm -hmm. a, just two months ago. It was almost the old time, almost. The almost, old, high, old almost. Time high. exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's keep this in mind. I think it's important to, um, to, uh, to have, in, uh, have in the back of your head. Uh, this is Grab. So Grab is an application that is used in Singapore. When we were in Singapore, we were using it every single day. And what it does is uh, it's basically the Uber that is used in Singapore. And Grab back then in September of last year, I remember they were thinking of integrating NFTs to their platform. But now it looks like they've moved away from that. And what you can do is top up your wallet with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, which is pretty cool. Mm. And on top of this, the most important news of today is that Michael, Michael Saylor has bought another $623 million worth of Bitcoin, which basically compensates the loss that was created from Grayscale. <laughs> yeah. And this guy, like, he is my idol. I think he's a genius, but he's also, there's a fine line between being a madman and a genius, <laughs> which Very is crazy. Fine. And the reason, the, how he's able to do this, you may be asking, okay, how does Michael Saylor have so much cash in reserve to be keep on buying Bitcoin and DCing in? Well, the thing is, my, MicroStrategy stock is at an all-time high. So what he can do is he can put uh, the stock as collateral mm -hmm. and borrow against it. And that's what he's, he's been doing over the past two weeks. I By think the way, sorry, Coinbase is doing the same thing. Isn't exactly. It? They're mm -hmm. copying Michael Saylor now, yeah. mm. which is super funny. But what happens if the stock price goes down a lot? Um, I think from my understanding, um, if they they sign the contract on the day of what the, the, the stock is at. So after you make that deal that you would borrow against it. I think it's fine, uh, but they wouldn't be able to do this if the price of the stock was doesn't low. go up again. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's the same as okay, putting collateral for Bitcoin when the price of Bitcoin is higher. Of course, you can borrow more money against those Bitcoin holdings in that. But, that, but they'll time. have a window of time in which they have to repay with an interest rate. Yeah, they'll to have it. like a liquidity mm. price, right? Exactly. That they would have to top up on their margin if it's not met. Exactly. But hey, I mean, he's a genius. He's been accumulating. He's the master of DCA, and uh, he's or, he's in over 100 percent profit so far. So a um, huge shout out to Michael Saylor. Yeah, um, we talked about this, the pension fund in, mm -hmm. in Japan. Um, this is also important. Uh, so according to Eric Balchunas and the Carson Group, which is a $30 billion financial advisory firm, uh, they say that only 3.5% of portfolio allocations in institutions have been allocated to Bitcoin. And keep in mind, this is such a small number of institutions that mm -hmm. have put Bitcoin in their allocations. And as the price of Bitcoin continues to increase over time, I think this will lead to further FOMO of, you know, wirehouses, Roth IRAs putting Bitcoin into their treasuries. So that's another very, very good sign. This is a bit of a controversial one. So IMF demanded Pakistan to impose capital gains tax on Bitcoin and other crypto investments to receive $3 billion aid package. 
What do you guys think about that? Wow. Are they scared of Bitcoin? Well, they need money. Maybe they need money. Well, well, no. Bitcoin is the direct competitor of the IMF, right? So if you look at it that way, I think it's, I found it interesting. Why would they offer $3 billion in exchange for Pakistan to tax uh, crypto investments? Hmm. Interesting. Mm. That's a good one to look into it for sure. Yeah, I found it. I found it interesting, so I thought I would highlight it. But you know, moving on, uh, I, I talked about this earlier on on the stream. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like that the Ethereum ETFs are most likely not going to get approved, and I think that will cause the price of Ethereum to potentially correct back down to two thousand four hundred dollars um, because we were just too overhyped at this moment in time. Um, but yeah. That basically covers everything I have. This is a good il- illustration of the <laughs> Bitcoin strategy. Yeah. You know, no matter the price, you just buy in DCA and, you know, that's that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. And DaVinci posted this. Capo was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Capo was right. Uh, Gareth Soloway was right. Gareth Soloway and Capo are <laughs> popular on Twitter these days. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, but uh, hey, that's 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 it for me today. Remember, tomorrow at 10 p.m., we're going to be seeing the mm-hmm. FOMC mm-hmm. data. Um, the interest rates have been at an all-time high in terms of the 10-year cycle. And if we go even further back, the interest rates are at huge highs and this is yeah. not sustainable. Uh, inflation is expected to come out at 3.1%, which would be 0.1% lower than where we were at um, in the previous inflation uh, inflation rate. Uh, but core inflation is uh, is low, so maybe we can stay at the current basis point rate hike or the rates that we're at and I don't know. I think it's going to be a surprise to all of us tomorrow morning or yeah. tomorrow night, actually. Indeed. I guess for Christian, can we can we take a look at the uh, axis? Yes, let's do yeah. it. Is uh, it listed on Bitflex? Do you I'll know? do some movie magic, so I'll let you do some movements. Uh, let me check. Christian, we are going to look into your Which request. Which one? Uh, AXS. AXS. Correct. And here goes my sneeze. Ah, let <laughs> me check that one. You can uh, show my screen. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Carl. Axie. Wow, I remember this being a lot higher. <laughs> oh was it at $40 at Dude, some point? It was it was over 100 bucks. Yeah, it was oh, over wow. 100 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Axie was really t- like co- going crazy back then. Now obviously much lower. Like this could be a good uh, accumulation. Like people don't understand a lot of these altcoins are still 80%, 90% down from their lows and I think it's just if you've got money on the side, um you should block out the noise and if you're bullish on this industry, you know, accumulate some, right? Yeah. If you want to buy Axie, you can buy it on Bybit. It's uh, available on Bybit. And uh, Binance, we have links to both down below. I think Bybit is, of course, our go-to place for that. But look at that. That's uh, that's a huge pump. And then now we're still very low. In the past one year, we still didn't see... It's <laughs> it's up 4% this year. So <laughs> Wow. Or in the past, you would have made more money if you held gold. <laughs> um, yeah, we're actually in the past 360 days. But that's that's crazy. So... Actually, I think I'm going to buy a little bit of Axie. Maybe I'll put like 100k in Axie. Wow. See what happens. That's a lot of money. They, they are doing a burning, a burning mechanism. They, are, they want to, basically there is loads of those character as NFT. So they, I was reading um, not long ago, they basically want to encourage people to burn them to reduce the supply, mm-hmm. which I thought it was really clever. But um, yeah, like you said, Carla, those are, those are the time where you want to buy. You want to yeah. buy the red and sell the green, no? Another game I I invested in that I like was this one. Also very low. 90%. 90% down. down. Like this is also very, very cheap And right it's now. like below public, like below the launch price. It's very low. It's up 130% here in the past uh, year. Yeah, which is impressive. In it's the past still... month, it's up 60%. So it's it's starting to to take off a bit. That's, that's nice to see. But definitely a uh, very good discount oh. here. Look at that, this chart, oh, you know. Wow. wow. Massive, massive discount. Speaking of discount, also I must say, uh, cost is also very, very uh, affordable compared to previous. Double bottom, by the way. Where on the yeah on the daily yeah. That's but yeah, that's an amazing <laughs> double bottom actually. <laughs> that's like the most textbook. Usually, wow. <laughs> yeah, it can't be any better. <laughs> usually, you never see double bottoms on the coin market cap, but that's actually an incredible double bottom. Exactly. That is insane. By the way, wow. were you guys able to talk about Solana in the? Previous previous live sh- live stream. We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. All right. We cover some news. All the memes going crazy. But Solana yeah, is correcting. I I put a short on Solana. By the way. Did you? I've learned not to do that because the last time I did that, I got completely liquidated. Really? <laughs> yeah. But I'm okay with getting liquidated. It's it's like part of part of life. Uh, let me see if I can find. 
out if I am in profits or not. By the way, Carl, I love the view where you can see shorts and longs battling. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, like, one, it's my favorite view. It triggers my inner data nerd. <laughs> <Yeah>. Same. same. <laughs> Maybe I got liquidated, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I got liquidated. Oops. It is what it is. Hey, it is what it is, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, because, um, oh, yeah, look, we got a huge pump there, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, like I said, like I, I put such a small position because I knew that this one, this is one of those that Make massive or break. risk. Yeah. Huge risk. Make you know? or break. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I put like five times more. Now I put something small and that's that's fine. And then there you go. Like sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. At least when we lose, we usually lose way less than the amounts we win when we of win. Of course, that's the objective as a trader, as an investor. Not like nine out of 10. If you're an investor, nine out of 10 are going to go down to zero uh, in crypto specifically. But of course, if you play it more risky, if you invest in high caps, then not so much. But if just one or two of those 10 projects that you invest in make hundreds of percents, then that covers everything you lost and gives you more profit. In trading, again, trading, your aim is to make money. It's not to time the market at the top or the bottom. Of course, everybody would love to do that, but Mm -hmm. you don't have to. You just need to book profits. And if you're profitable, then that's perfect. Accurate. And what I would like to see now is 500 likes. That would be awesome. What I like to see is food and water. Ooh, I'm also. That would be also nice. I actually, need, nice. I also need. I I didn't fast today, but I ate a little bit of breakfast, and since then, nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm also very hungry. I, yesterday, today, I had to uh, unfortunately stop my fast just for today because yesterday, I was about to faint, mm. and I I think I'm gonna. It's my first time fasting, um. So I'll probably I'm, I'm taking a break today, and then let's see what happens. Yeah, take it easy. Listen to your body. You know. Yeah. That's really important. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. But guys, take it easy. Thank you so much. Amazing stream. As always, Crypto Kid, you are a legend. Carl, Air you are a legend. Bump. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for watching. Remember, we, lo- we go every day. We go every day live. Yeah, I guess you can say it. We go yeah. live every day, <laughs> Monday to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so remember to subscribe and smash the like. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers.